welcome to episode 23 of Upside Daily. My prayer is that our time together in this devotional will empower you to live with faith, love and hope as a city changer. Now you've joined me on the 23rd episode of season one on the power of identification with Christ. And today I want to share about identifying with Christ. What does this really mean to my life? When we think about identification, you know, all the sermons I've ever heard um, normally happens um, with, with a challenge to identify with somebody in the story of Jesus. If you think about the crucifixion over Easter, I'm always, you know, I always listen to sermons and I, I, I'm always challenged to, to be the Roman soldier or the, you know, Mary, the mother of Jesus or one of the disciples or somebody in the crowd that was hollering, crucify him. But the one thing I was never taught that I was actually supposed to identify with Jesus in that moment. Not with anybody in the crowd, not with anybody else in the story, but that Jesus was the place, truly the place of my identification. Because in that moment, he did not just, you know, die as Jesus, as the Lamb of God. He died as me. And that's why it's so important that when we talk about what does it mean to identify with Jesus Christ. What is the power of that that is awakened in my life? Um, these are the things. And I want to leave three thoughts with you today. The first one is, is that you have been crucified with him. In Galatians 2.20, we read these powerful words. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Just this week at our house, we got this uh, like a type of a direct mail letter. You know, it's a, they, they, they send you this advert and say, here's a lot of things that you can buy. It was in strong red and blue coloring. You, you couldn't ignore it. And on the, on the envelope, it said, if you've ever secretly felt fat, skinny, lazy, compulsive or depressed, this letter is for you, okay, feeling fat and skinny. But the first thought that I had was, which one of you gave them my name that I should receive this letter? You know, your life can be changed for £29.95 plus £3 shipping, said the letter. That's obviously for shipping and handling. And, and the package um, that this letter offers to you today would normally retail for £42.55, you know, so £29.95 is a wonderful bargain. And then the last sentence of this mail says, you know, I'm not making you any promises, but I guarantee this will work. <laughs> Change your life for $29.95. You know, when we get this kind of stuff, I often wonder, you know, who buys this? You and I do, because we're looking for anything that will change our lives, anything that will help us get control, and, and, and we're willing to pay the price. I recently read an article in the Times that says, you know, there are over 3,000 self-help books written every year, and we buy them. You know, what is, what, is the, what is that that is out of control in your life? You know, what do you do when you have a hard time? You know, your temper, perhaps spending. Do you have a hard time controlling these things? Now, I read this bumper sticker that said, the person who says money can't buy happiness just doesn't know where to shop. But, but this is our challenge, you know, eating, your moods, drinking, sexual desires, procrastination. I've always wanted to write a sermon about that. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But, you know, have you ever started a new habit or broken a bad habit, you know, only in a few weeks to be back in the same position and you think to yourself, I'd like to change this or I'd like to change that. And what about New Year's resolutions? You know, how many of us keep them until at least February or perhaps March? You know, resolutions don't work. Good intentions are seldom good enough because the results for these things are always predictable 
it always brings confusion. You know, why do I keep on making the same mistakes? Why am I so resistant to change? Why do I always act in the ways that are bad for me? It always brings confusion, but it always brings frustration. I have the desire to do what is right, but you know, it feels as if I don't have the power to do that. And, and, and as you start going on with this, you don't want to change. You want to change. You want to do this for the better. But the problem with self-help books is that they tell you what to do, but they don't give you the power to do that. No self-help book can ha- help you receive the power to change. It might say, you know, drop all your bad habits or stop doing this or start doing that, but it doesn't empower you. And, and, and the other thing that this type of lifestyle does, it brings us to a place of defeat and discouragement. You see, what we have to recognize that what Jesus says is that we are dead to this type of lifestyle. It no longer has a hold on you. It, the only power that it has over you is the power that you give it. You know, we no longer have to sin. We sin because we want to. And, and that's what Galatians says. This is no longer a life of try harder. Galatians says, my old identity has been crucified. You know, I, I now find myself in a new life, in union with Christ. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God who loves me, says the Apostle Paul, who gave himself for me, dispensing his life into mine. Something has happened to you. You need to awaken to this reality. You have died with Christ. But there's a second aspect to this. We've not just died with him. We have been raised with him. Listen to what Colossians says. You are in fact raised together with Christ. Now ponder with persuasion the consequence of your co-inclusion in him. You have to recognize that you are a new creature. You are alive to God dead to sin, but alive to God. The Passion Translation of this same verse says, Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. That is why we are to yearn for all that is above, for that's where Christ sits enthroned at the place of all power, honor, and authority. You see, something in your thinking needs to change. Earthly realities are no longer your reference. Can I just add into this? I'm not saying that our earthly realities should be ignored, you know, as if you, as if they no longer define you, as if they no longer define us. And I'm not su- suggesting that we close our eyes to the natural realities and live with blindfolds. I'm not suggesting that, you know, that we, that we do this, that we ignore the things that are happening around us. But I am suggesting that you and I live by faith and not by sight. So much of our lives, our conversations, our thoughts are driven by natural thinking and circumstance. How often have you and I, how often have I, (laughs) question to you, how often have you been in a situation where you know that you have been healed by his stripes and yet we don't always speak or think in that way? And that's exactly what it means to be raised with Christ. It opens up a whole new way of living. It allows you to think differently, to consider differently and... (laughs) in effect, live differently. I've died with him. I've been raised with him. But there's also a third aspect. I have ascended with him. It's not just Christ that ascended. My life is ascended. Again, I read this in Colossians 3. It says, Christ's resurrection is yours too. That's why you are to yearn for the things that are above where he sits enthroned at the place of all authority. And then the Bible says, yes, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not with the distractions of the natural realm. You see, when you and I become acquainted with the treasures of the heavenly realm, the heavenly realities, we are no longer distracted by a superficial inferior reference to our lives. We have entered a realm of his authority See, this moves your life. When you recognize you have also ascended with him, not just died with him and not just raised with him, but you have ascended, it moves your life from a place where it goes beyond just receiving forgiveness for sins to a place where you are restored in innocence. 
It goes beyond the place where you just live for his acceptance, but where you recognize he has given you an inheritance. And it moves your life beyond just receiving promises from God to a place where you recognize you live from authority. <laughs> Listen, thank you for joining me on this podcast. Um, as I always say, it's a joy and an honor for me to connect with you. An honor because I know that this ignites life. I trust that it ignites life in your life. In tomorrow's episode, we'll be chatting about no incidental encounters needed anymore. Um, and as we grow in our understanding of the incredible power of identification with Christ, I trust that you will be stirred, but above all, that you will be transformed. God bless you. Live blessed. Live blessed.